With my design laid out, in order for users to navigate through my application, I'm going to have to add action script and coding. So for example, this is my first page. As you can see, it's just got my name and the square buttons I'm going to end up having users click to go to a specific content page. Now down here in my timeline, you'll notice that if I click and drag from frame 1 to 2, I go to my game design page. And the several ones after that are game design. But then when I get to frame 6, it changes to photography. So I want two of my buttons on the home page for when the users click on this one, it goes to game design. And when users click on this one, it will go to photography. In order to do so, we need to do coding. You'll notice that right now down here in my layers panel, I have only three different layers and organization folders. Now, when we add coding, a fourth layer is going to appear on top and it's going to be named actions, just to give you the heads up. Before we start, let's go ahead and left click on our square. By doing so, you'll end up having this option in your properties window. And notice how mine says game design already? That's because I already typed a new instance name in here. Normally when you go to this section, it will just say instance name. And the reason why you change it is so that the coding or the action script can end up picking up on this item easier when you end up putting coding to it. If you don't have this option, you're going to have to go down to your shape, left click on it, go up to modify, and go to convert to symbol. And by doing so, you can end up clicking on movie clip for type and rename the symbol. After that, if you click OK, you'll notice that you should have your instance name up here. Now I already went ahead and did that with this first one. And I also made sure that I left clicked on this again. Because now we're going to add coding. So go up to Window and scroll down the code snippets. By doing so, you will get two folders that have several options inside. We're going to stick with Action Script. So click on the arrow by the folder. And the very first thing we want to do is a timeline navigation. For when we click on the one button, we are going to go through the rest of the timeline and go to another frame or specific area. So click on the arrow by timeline navigation. Now there's several options here, and we're going to select this one called click to go to frame and stop by double clicking it. And by doing so, it will end up opening the actions window with the comments and the actual scripting. So lines 2 through 8 here are just comments that the Adobe programmers left behind so you can understand the coding easier. The actual coding starts on line 10 and ends at 15. Basically, this coding is saying when the user clicks on the game design object, the computer will make sure that it hears a mouse click. If it hears the mouse click, it will go and carry out this function. The function is defined below, and when this function runs, it's going to make the user go to and stop at a specific frame number. Since my game design page starts on frame 2, I'm going to change this number to 2. Afterwards, I'm going to click on the little X up here, and click on the X here, and you'll notice now that I have an actions layer. Now if I end up debugging, you'll notice that my portfolio is on an infinite loop going out of whack. The reason being is because when you make several different frames, you need to put a code on it called the stop frame action. So in order to do that, we're going to left click back on our frame 1 on the actions layer, go up to window, go to actions this time, and when we get here, all you're going to have to do is go up to line 1 and when you're up at line 1 you're just going to end up hitting the return key once go back to line 1 and type in the word stop with open parentheses, close parentheses, and semicolon now if you debug it that will end up making the actual application stop on frame 1 and not go anywhere else if you click on this square you'll go to frame 2 and you'll stop mainly because the action that we put on that button 
specifies that the user will go to this frame and automatically stop. Now if we could get to any of the rest of our pages, it will go on an infinite loop again. So now that we established that, let's do the same thing for the other square over here. The difference though is my photography page doesn't start until frame 6, as defined not only by the timeline here, but you can see the number right here that specifies the frame it's on. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to frame 1. I'm going to left click on my square here. I'm going to go up to my instance name and type in photography. And then, making sure that this is selected again, I'll left click one more time to be safe. I'll follow that up by going up to window, code snippets, back to my action script, back to my timeline navigation, and then to my click to go to frame and stop, again by double clicking on it. This will add the same code that we had before, but this time we're going to change the frame number to 6. Now if we exit out of this and we debug one more time, we should now be able to click on the gray square and end up on the photography page. So this is your basic how to go to frame and stop actions we just learned and basic debugging with code snippets. In the next tutorial, we're going to add gestures. So you're going to learn how to swipe left to right through the simulator and also through a smart device or phone. And we're also going to add more actions and keyframes to make sure that every single page we go on has a stop function, but also that every single page knows that the swipe option is available as a gesture.